Number 7. Katrina Ipaya New Zealand teenager Katrina Ipaya got into an argument with a woman over loud music while at a house party in Avonhead, Christchurch. In August of 2017, Ipaya, aged 18 at the time, had had a troubled upbringing and was known to have gang affiliations. As the confrontation with 32-year-old mother Alicia Marie Nathan escalated, Epaya stabbed her several times with a kitchen knife in an alcohol-fueled rage. She warned others at the party not to call for help for Nathan and threatened to kill another woman in attendance before fleeing. She was eventually arrested and pleaded guilty to murder, for which she was given a life sentence with a minimum of 10 years served in May of 2019. On September the 11th of the following year, Ipaya was transported from prison to Middlemore Hospital to get treatment for a hand injury. The face tattooed 22-year-old had earlier asked for compassionate release so that she could attend a cousin's funeral in Papakura. Before her expected transfer back to prison, Ipaya slipped her loosely fastened handcuffs and fled from the hospital on foot. It was later revealed that she deliberately hurt her hand as part of the escape plan. A warning was issued to the public not to approach the extremely dangerous fugitive under any circumstances. She remained on the run for roughly two weeks before she was recaptured and had nine months added to her sentence. Most recently, in February of 2022, Ipaya launched a one-woman riot at the Christchurch Women's Prison. She used furniture to barricade herself in an area that was fenced off and part of the secure perimeter. Ipaya blacked out windows and a CCTV camera before she made her way to the prison's roof through an access hatch. She used a metal bar to destroy property estimated at over $18,000, including roofing material, skylights, and a satellite dish. Negotiators talked her down and she once more had time added to her sentence. Number 6. Isabella Guzman In 2020, TikTok users started sharing clips from the 2013 arraignment of teenager Isabella Guzman, set to the Ava Max song, Sweet But Psycho, with some users trying to imitate her odd facial expressions in the courtroom. Guzman's rise to internet fame and consequent fandom occurred as she was in a mental institution for brutally murdering her mother. On the night of August 28th of 2013, she went into the bathroom of their Colorado home as her mother, Yoon Mi Hoi, was taking a shower. Guzman, who was then just 18 years old, stabbed the woman over 70 times in the head, neck and torso. The teen's stepfather made his way upstairs. After hearing a thud followed by blood-curdling screams, Guzman blocked the door at first and her stepfather called 911 when he saw blood pooling underneath it. When he went upstairs again, the teen left the bathroom and said nothing as she walked past him with a bloodied kitchen knife in hand. The man found his wife naked on the bathroom floor and covered in stab wounds. He tried to revive her, but she was ultimately pronounced dead at the scene. Guzman was arrested at a nearby parking garage the following day, where officers found her wearing a pink sports bra and turquoise shorts that were still covered in her mother's blood. During her arraignment on September the 5th, Guzman smirked, pointed to her eyes and adopted the facial expressions that would later gain attention on the internet, along with what users described as her attractive and seemingly innocent appearance. Guzman pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. Doctors found that for years she'd been suffering from paranoid schizophrenia with delusions and hallucinations that greatly altered her perception of reality. Guzman didn't think she'd killed her mother, but a woman named Cecilia in order to save the world. A judge accepted her plea and sent her to the Colorado Mental Health Institute in Pueblo. As of the latest updates in 2020, Guzman petitioned the court to be released, claiming her schizophrenia was under control and she no longer posed a threat to society. She expressed regrets for her actions, but also noted that she'd been abused by her parents for years. They were Jehovah's Witnesses and Guzman claimed that the abuse worsened after she'd left the religion in her early teens. Number 5. Alex Titchelman On November the 22nd of 2013, millionaire Google executive Forrest Hayes didn't return to his California home and his wife became worried. She called the captain of his 46-foot long yacht called Escape, which was docked at the Santa Cruz Marina. The captain found 
the 51-year-old father of five lying unresponsive in the main cabin, and he was later pronounced dead, with drug overdose as the reported cause. Investigators learned that Hayes had secretly been seeing escort Alex Titchelman, whom he'd met through the website Seeking Arrangement, and determined that she'd been with him on the night of his death. As a high-end escort, Titchelman was reported to have had up to 200 clients, the majority of whom worked in Silicon Valley. The police eventually obtained a harrowing video from the yacht that showed, in chilling detail, Hayes' final moments. When he and Titchelman would meet, they'd have intimate relations and partake in heavy drugs. As revealed by the footage, the escort then, in her mid-twenties, had injected Hayes with heroin. He soon started experiencing medical complications and passed out, with Titchelman seemingly panicking and trying to revive him. However, she then stepped over the man as she finished her glass of wine. Titchelman didn't call the emergency services and instead started wiping down her fingerprints, along with further evidence of her presence. Before abandoning the millionaire in the yacht, Titchelman was arrested roughly eight months after Hayes' passing and eventually pleaded guilty to involuntary manslaughter. The call girl killer, as she was dubbed by the media, was sentenced to six years in prison and released in 2017. She was extradited to Canada but less than a year later was indicted for a murder in Fulton County, Georgia. Her boyfriend, 53-year-old musician and club owner Dean Ryopel had died roughly two months before Hayes from what was initially suspected as an accidental overdose. The circumstances of Ryopel's passing were reinvestigated as he died in an eerily similar manner to the Google executive, Titchelman, who claimed to have found him unconscious on the floor as she got out of the shower, denied having played a role in his death. During her exchanges with a 911 operator, she claimed that he'd overdosed or something, also saying that she thought it was definitely accidental. The case was ongoing as of the latest information released to the media. Number 4. Victoria Nasirova On October the 5th of 2014, Russian woman Ala Alexenko, aged 54, went missing after having recently befriended a woman by the name of Victoria Nasirova. On the same day of her disappearance, surveillance cameras recorded what appeared to be her limp body in the passenger seat of a rental car driven by the latter. Alexenko's badly burnt body was found months later, two miles from her home in Krasnodar. Investigators learned that jewelry and thousands of dollars in cash had been taken from her home. Nazirova became the prime suspect, but managed to flee from Russia to New York by allegedly sleeping with a local police officer, after which Interpol issued a red notice for her. She went on to live in Brooklyn and enjoyed a lavish lifestyle reportedly funded by the various men she lured into her life and by working as a masseuse offering quality massages at home. Nasirova resumed her criminal activity in May of 2016 when she was caught shoplifting furs from a Century 21 store. Emboldened by the fact that the authorities failed to realize she was wanted by Interpol, her crime spree subsequently increased in scope and magnitude. In June of 2016, Nasirova drugged and robbed several men she'd met on dating sites and later tried to pawn off their valuables under an alias. Then in August, she tried to kill and steal the identity of her friend Ukrainian woman Olga Sivik, with whom she bore a striking resemblance. Nasirova had befriended the 35-year-old at a beauty salon and subsequently traveled to her home in Forest Hills, Queens, under the pretext of getting her eyelashes done. While in Civic's home, she gave her a cheesecake laced with the deadly Russian-made tranquilizer Phenazepam. After Civic passed out, Nasirova dressed her in lingerie and spread pills around her body to make it look like she'd taken her own life. The victim was found in time and recovered after receiving treatment in a local hospital. Upon returning home, she realized her passport and employment authorization card were missing. In the meantime, Alexenko's daughter, Nadezda Ford, had learned that her mother's suspected killer was actually living near her in Brooklyn. She hired private detective Herman Weisberg, and he was successful in tracking down Nasirova, who'd kept posting on Facebook under a different name. In one of her photos, Weisberg noticed in the reflection of her sunglasses that the stitching on her car seats belonged to a specific Chrysler model. His team staked out Sheep's Head Bay, where the NYPD arrested Nasarova in March of 2017. 
She faced over 30 charges from her various crimes and subsequently said, I admit doing a part of it, but I will only talk about it in court. Number 3. Hend Bustami Las Vegas woman Hend Bustami made headlines in late August of 2022 through the unusual comments she'd made in the aftermath of her arrest at the Harry Reid Airport. The 28-year-old had left without paying her bill at an airport Chili's, and responding officers found her belligerently drunk. As she was being detained, Bastami accused law enforcement of harassing her because they'd never seen anyone as pretty as her. She was charged with public misconduct, but the attention sparked by the case would be massively overshadowed by the events of October the 26th of 2022. On that day, at around 2.30 a.m., Bostami called the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department and calmly confessed to killing her own mother. She maintained a monotone voice while talking to the dispatcher, opening with the statement, I think I killed my mummy. The operator then asked for her address, which Bostami provided before offering further information about the incident. She reported that she'd struck the victim, 61-year-old Afaf Hussanan, with a table and broke it on her head. The young woman then claimed to have cut her neck. The emergency services went to the home and pronounced Hussanan dead from multiple lacerations believed to have been inflicted with glass shards. Bostami subsequently fled to California where the police found her covered in blood during a traffic stop and took her into custody. Bostami once again admitted that she'd killed her mother. The murder had been the gruesome culmination of a verbal dispute between the pair. Neighbors claimed that loud arguments were commonplace in their home also noted numerous instances of erratic behavior from Bustami. The woman whom law enforcement suspected suffered from mental illness had been spotted talking to herself while walking up and down the street, going into residence, open garages or scattering her belongings outside. Number 2. Kayla Borke In 2012, Kayla Borke was a promising student at Simon Fraser University in Burnaby, Canada, with hopes of one day becoming a criminologist. At some point, however, the 22-year-old woman told a fellow student that she'd been taking forensic classes in order to learn how to get away with something in the future. Borke also made a startling confession that would bring her into the attention of law enforcement. She admitted to have tortured, killed, and dismembered family pets in her hometown of Prince George and that she fantasized about getting a gun and shooting a homeless person. The classmates alerted campus security who contacted the police. Officers searched Borke's residence and found a bag containing a kitchen knife, hypodermic needles, a razor blade and a mask, along with videos of her killing and hanging the family dog and torturing the family cat. Investigators learned that Borke had pondered killing a roommate had allegedly convinced a boy online to take his own life and fantasized about killing someone during a home invasion. She would go on chat rooms under various aliases, one of which was Killer Berserk, and vividly discuss her dark fantasies. Borke was interviewed by multiple psychologists who noted that she was highly intelligent and articulate, but had a preoccupation for causing pain and showed no remorse for her crimes. She was ultimately diagnosed as a psychopath with sadistic tendencies. Borke was convicted in November of 2012 of causing unnecessary pain, suffering, or injury to animals, willfully and without lawful excuse killing animals, and possessing a weapon for a dangerous purpose. She was given three years probation with roughly 47 conditions that would govern her life. Due to the fact that she was a high-risk release, Borke had been adopted from a Romanian orphanage as a baby was escorted to a new residence as her mother no longer wanted her in the family home. Some of the conditions of her release were that she couldn't possess knives and access social media nor associate with anyone under the age of 18, have anyone in her home from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. and she had to fully inform any visitors of her crimes and their circumstances. Updates indicated that on multiple occasions, she violated the rule that prevented her from going online. Number 1. Tamara Samsonova Known in the Russian press as Baba Yaga, or the Granny Ripper, Tamara Samsonova had allegedly claimed at least a dozen victims before she was finally arrested in July of 2015. 
In March of that year, she'd begun caring for 79-year-old Valentina Nikolaevna Yulanova, who lived on the same street as her in St. Petersburg. Samsonova moved in with Yulanova and reportedly liked living in her apartment, but the pair's relationship gradually deteriorated, and the latter eventually asked her to leave. On July the 23rd, Samsonova gave Yulanova an Olivier salad, her favorite dish, after lacing it with phenazepam. Once the woman succumbed to the effects of the potent sedative, Samsonova decapitated and further dismembered her using two knives and a saw. She wrapped her remains in a shower curtain and dumped them near a pond, where they were found by a passerby a few days later. After establishing the victim's identity, local law enforcement went to her apartment and found Samsonova living inside. They immediately arrested her upon noticing traces of blood in the bathroom and discovering more body parts in plastic bags scattered around the apartment. Samsonova, who was 68 years old at the time of her arrest, admitted to killing the victim following a row over unwashed cups. The woman also kept a detailed diary in which she had extensively written about her life, including several other murders. One line read, I killed my tenant, Volodya. It was too easy. I cut him to pieces in the bathroom with a knife and put the pieces of his body in plastic bags. The police connected her to at least 12 unsolved killings in St. Petersburg, which had occurred over the preceding five years and in which all of the victims had been cut up and left in public parks. Samsonova was heavily interested in black magic and the occult, while also harboring a warped admiration for serial killer Andre Chikatilo, who'd killed over 50 people. Much like her twisted idol, Samsonova was reported to have eaten parts of her victims, having developed a particular taste for their lungs. During her trial in December of 2015, she blew a kiss to reporters in the courtroom gallery. She was seen smiling and clapping as her sentence was read out, saying, I am guilty and I deserve a punishment. Samsonova was determined to have been suffering from paranoid schizophrenia, a condition for which she'd been hospitalized three times in the past. Her sentence was compulsory psychiatric treatment at a specialized facility in Kazan for the rest of her life. Thanks for watching. Would you still date your crush if you found out all their exes had died under mysterious circumstances? Let us know in the comments section below.